You are listening to the Atlanta Sports Podcast, the only podcast covering all of your teams. Bringing you the best sports news from the state of Georgia, from the professional ranks to the high school levels, we have it all. Welcome back to the Atlanta Sports Podcast. My name is Frankie Maloof, and we're going to have a very special episode of our show today. The Falcons are in the Super Bowl, as most of you know. Super Bowl 51, Atlanta Falcons versus New England Patriots. This is going to be our preview show for that game this weekend. It's going to be a big game. The city of Atlanta has basically gone crazy the past few weeks. We're going to have an interview later on with Mike Conti from 92.9 The Game. So make sure you listen all the way through to hear that interview. And before we get started, I want to thank you for finding us, whether it be on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play, and for subscribing to us there. And if you have not done so already, please do subscribe to us. You can also find us on YouTube or on our website, atlantasportspodcasts.com, or on Twitter, at ATL Sportscasts. So in this interview with Mike Conti, we're going to be talking about the game this weekend. Obviously, we're going to be talking about the matchups that could possibly swing the game one direction or another. We're also going to be talking about the MVP conversation at the end. We talk about Matt Ryan or Tom Brady. Talk about Kyle Shanahan and him possibly taking the job next season with the San Francisco 49ers, leaving the Falcons without an offensive coordinator, and who could possibly step up and if there would be a big impact one way or the other if Kyle Shanahan were to leave, whether it will bring the team way down from their number one offense this season. And now I'm going to be joined by Luke Winstall and Mike Conti over the phone. We are now joined by Mike Conti, the Atlanta Falcons and Atlanta Hawks pregame show host on 92.9 The Game. Mike, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure, guys. How are you? I'm doing well. So we're going to start off, we're going to talk about the Super Bowl today. The Falcons are in the Super Bowl. That hasn't happened too much in the history of this city. So when you look at the Falcons, what impresses you the most? Does anything concern you as well? Well, what impresses me the most is how quickly the young players have matured. I mean, you have seven players under the age of 25 who are starters on this team and four rookies who start or play the the amount of minutes that a starter would play. And I I think especially since Thanksgiving, uh, you, you look at the way that they've matured on defense and have started to play so much better as a unit. And I don't know if that's a testament to coaching or just a testament to to talent sharpening very quickly, but it, it, it's a real uh, credit to how well those young players have played and how well the rookies have played. What concerns me, I think, is the relative lack of Super Bowl and experience that this team has. And I, I don't even know if it's that big of a concern, but you can't deny the fact that the Patriots have 24 players on their roster who have been to the Super Bowl, and the Falcons have four. Uh, you know, will it manifest in the game and, and become a problem for the Falcons? Hard to say, but that is one clear area where the Patriots have a big advantage in this game. The NFL's number one scoring offense is one in four against the number one scoring defense all time in the Super Bowl. The lone exception was the 49ers over the Broncos in Super Bowl 24. So what do you think it will take to reverse that trend and for the Falcons' number one offense to defeat the Patriots' number one defense? Boy, I'll tell you, that is a great stat. That's a terrific stat. I didn't even know that. Um, Honestly, I think in a game like this where you have two very good offenses, uh, New England's offense is almost as good as Atlanta's statistically, and if you look at the two quarterbacks, I mean, they're probably 1 and 1A in the league right now. It probably will come down to turnovers and penalties. And, you know, both of these teams don't really commit penalties. Falcons had a divisional playoff game against Seattle where they only had two penalties for 10 yards. New England only had two penalties for 10 yards in the AFC Championship game against Pittsburgh. So, to me, it's going to come down to turnovers and who's going to make the mistake. And Tom Brady, his career in the Super Bowl, he's got a very, very good touchdown-to-interception ratio. Matt Ryan has never been here before, but in this playoff, Matt Ryan has seven touchdown passes. Tom Brady has five, but he's made two interceptions. And the Patriots are plus two in the turnover margin in the postseason, the Falcons plus four. 
So if the Falcons' defense can find a way to create a couple turnovers, uh, such as a, a Vic Beasley strip sack, that would be a very, very good time for him to have one in the Super Bowl, obviously. I think they're going to have a very good chance at reversing that stat that you speak of. What matchup in this game intrigues you the most is possibly the matchup that could influence the game the most, one way or the other? Well, that's a good question. I think it, it's going to be Julio Jones against the New England secondary. Um, you know, Julio, the question will be how healthy is he and how much can he give them in terms of number of offensive snaps. He played more than I thought he would against Green Bay in the NFC Championship game, and this is the Super Bowl, so obviously you can empty the tank. But I, I don't think Julio has faced the secondary this tough in the postseason, probably since Thanksgiving, to be totally honest with you. I mean, what we're finding out now is that Richard Sherman was at far less than 100% for his game uh, in the divisional playoffs. So how is Julio going to match up against that New England secondary? I think that's a big key. So one thing we know about Bill Belichick is that he really likes to take the other team's best player out of the game and potentially the best two players if he can, but the Falcons just have so many weapons. So do you think he focuses more on stopping Julio or the Falcons' run game? Well, I mean, I don't know what the right answer is there because if you take Julio out, then you open up a lot underneath for Devontae and, and Kevin Coleman to do work. And if you key in on the run game, then you expose yourself to Julio burning you up top. I mean, if I'm Belichick, I don't want the best receiver of the game beating me, so I'm probably trying to take Julio out. But if I'm a Falcons fan, I, I kind of like that possibility because now you open up a lot of options underneath, not only for the two running backs, but I think for Taylor Gabriel as well. And the Falcons have a speed advantage over New England uh, when you get those guys in open space. So I don't really know if there's a right or wrong answer there for Bill Belichick, but He's a very, very brilliant coach who has schemed against very tough offenses before and has had success. This is going to be a big test for him. Which Falcons player under the radar might make the biggest difference this week and might be the most unsung hero throughout the season that could make a big impact? Well, I think Brooks Reed, and, and we saw that in the Seattle game. I thought that was the best he has played since joining the Falcons, as disruptive as he was to Russell Wilson in the pocket. And what the Falcons are going to have to do is make Tom Brady uncomfortable in the pocket because they're going to throw the ball a lot. They're probably going to throw more than 40 times, as they did in the AFC Championship game against Pittsburgh. So if a guy like Brooks Reed can generate any kind of a consistent pass rush like he did against Seattle, you know Beasley's going to be able to do that. You would hope that Upshaw would probably be able to help you, and Freeney might give you a little bit. But I, I look at Brooks Reed. If he can play at the same level that he played at three weeks ago against the Seahawks, that would be a very, very good thing for the Falcons. So what is your prediction for the Super Bowl? Are you taking the Fal um, Falcons or Patriots? And not really... Who are you taking, but who? Do, when you look at the matchups, who does your mind tell you you think is going to win? Well, you know, I don't like to pick games on which I work, so I hope you'll forgive me that I'm not going to predict an outcome. But as I look at the matchup, I think, again, it, it all comes down to who's going to make the mistake. Uh, because these are two very even teams, especially in offense. And I go back to Matt Ryan has played mistake-free football since Thanksgiving, and Tom Brady has not. Uh, I'm with, right with Matt Ryan. I'm very confident with this Falcons team. And I kind of like the fact that they're playing the Patriots, to be honest with you, because if they beat New England, you can't really make the argument that anything was a fluke. They will have earned this because they would have done it against a team that, that's a legacy team that, that's basically been the most successful team since the year 2000 in the NFL. So I like this opportunity for the Falcons. I think they have a very good chance, but I'm not one to take a game on which I work. I hope you don't mind. Yeah, it's fine. So, of course, these two guys, as you mentioned, are basically 1-1A one one in terms of quarterbacks in the NFL. And the MVP will be announced, from, as far as I know, the night before the Super Bowl. But how do you think the game just impacts overall who really should have won the MVP or that type of conversation? Well, I think Matt Ryan should have won the MVP, and I would say that if he threw five interceptions in the Super Bowl, because I think he's been clearly better than any other quarterback in the league. He's been the quarterback of the best offense in the league this year, and one of the best offenses of all time. And to me, Tom Brady loses any argument to the MVP, because he missed four games. 
I mean, he was terrific in the 12 games in which he did play. Went 11 and 1 in those games of the regular season and has now won two playoff games. Take nothing away from Brady, but I don't know how you could be the most valuable player when you didn't play the whole season. So I think Matt Ryan's legacy is secure, guys. The, the two playoff performances he's had to this point, I don't think what happens in the Super Bowl will affect that. But I would also be very, very surprised if Matt Ryan went out and laid an egg on Sunday. I, I He just... He's got that look to me of someone who's very, very determined and really dialed in and playing the stake free football right now. That's a good sign for Matt Ryan. It seems like Matt, to me at least, has really improved drastically. The numbers show it, the play on the field, they're not throwing that costly interception as much. But what do you attribute that to? I mean, what do you think has really turned it around from last season to this season for Matt Ryan? Yeah, you know, I, I've done a lot of interviews across the country. I get that question a lot. The one thing I keep coming back to is the addition of Alex Mack. I think that's been really, really big because now you're seeing Matt with clean pockets and time to throw what he is able to do with the, the proper resources around him. And the other thing that Alex Mack has helped with is uh, run blocking, and it's allowed Kyle Shanahan in this offense to be a lot more balanced, which, again, takes some pressure off Matt Ryan. So a lot of people want to give credit to Kyle Shanahan, and that's there. And a lot of people want to give credit to Julio and, and the role players of the receiving core. That's totally fair as well. But to me, I think it all starts up front. Matt has time to throw now. Why does he have time to throw? Because of Alex Mack. Now, if Kyle Shanahan were to take the 49ers job, and it looks like he will at this point, the 49ers are very interested in him, where does it leave the offense for next season? Yeah, that's a good question. I think you have to look at promoting from within. If there's a coach on this on the staff that can assume the role of offensive coordinator, because obviously you want to maintain the continuity. But the other thing I would say is that you have all the pieces in place for any coordinator uh, to develop a scheme that's going to hurt a lot of opponents. Because you've got your two running backs, you've got a Leon, you've got a quarterback. So I don't want to suggest that you can just plug and play any coordinator and it'll be fine. I think it's important for them to try to maintain that continuity. But quite frankly, I don't know what their options would be on the existing offensive staff uh, if it was Kyle Shanahan leaves. And then where can fans find you on social media? Uh, I'm on Twitter, at MyConti929, that's C-O-N-T-I. And, uh, I uh, can also be found on the 92.9 The Game Facebook page and on all the uh, Falcons Radio Network pages. But Twitter's the best place to find it. All right. Thank you for joining us, Mike, and we look forward to talking to you again sometime soon. Yeah, anytime, guys. Great job. Really enjoy talking to you. That was a very good interview with Mike Conti. Again, he's from 92.9 The Game. I invite you to check that out. Follow him on Twitter. Against the spread, the Falcons are 6-1 and one as an underdog, while the Patriots are 10-5 and five as a favorite against the spread. And then some question marks is, how well can the young players play? We talked about a little bit earlier on in the interview, but the young players have been a big part of why the Falcons are in the Super Bowl this season. They got three starters out of the draft last spring. They got Deion Jones, Devondre Campbell, Keanu Neal, Austin Hooper. They got lots of players that are there putting excitement on the table. And also, Vic Beasley has finally opened up. He's the NFL's leading pass rusher. He has 15 and a half sacks. That beats even Von Miller from Denver, which is a huge improvement. I don't think the Falcons had very many more than 15 and a half sacks as a team last season. The defense is finally coming together, and they're going to have to really step up if the Falcons are going to win this game. And then, how much will the experience help the Patriots? 24 guys, you heard Mike say that in the interview, 24 guys in their roster have been to the Super Bowl, how much will that help them? That will be a big question mark. And I don't think that it's going to make too much of a difference after the first quarter. The first quarter, there'll be a lot of nerves, but I think that that'll calm down, and I think the Falcons will have a really good chance to beat the Patriots, although most people don't expect them to happen. Just a quick look at the injury report. Julio Jones is the only injured player listed by ESPN on the Falcons. He has that toe injury that's been nagging him throughout the past few weeks. Then also, Alex Mack had that sprained ankle in the game versus Green Bay. He's listed as healthy, but that's just something to keep an eye on in case he tweaks it again later on. It's still probably not 100%. Patriots do not have any injured players, according to the ESPN. They're healthy, and the Falcons will be pretty much healthy as well. So this will be the 100% of both rosters coming at each other.
And then if the game were to come down to a kicking situation, if it were to come down to a last-second field goal, the Falcons have the edge over the Patriots there. Matt Bryant, 34 for 37 on field goals this season, 91.9%. He's 6 for 8 from the 50-yard and further. 6 for 8 from 50-yard field goals and further. He's 56 for 57 on extra points. And then Steven Goskowski for the New England Patriots, 27 for 32, 84.4%. He's 2 for 4 from 50-plus. And then he's 46 for 49 on extra points. He missed three. A missed extra point could determine the outcome of the game here. This will be probably a very close game. And then one other question that we talked about earlier is, who will the Patriots focus on? Luke asked that question earlier. Patriots, they got a lot of options to choose from. If you guard against the run, Julio Jones and Muhammad Sanu and Taylor Gabriel, they'll open up the passing game with Matt Ryan. And then if you guard against the pass, Devon. Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman will be right there to shred the defense. So the Falcons have a very spread out offense. It's not one guy, which is really good. And then can Matt Ryan compete with Tom Brady? That's what the question is throughout the media. For a long time, Matt Ryan has never been on Tom Brady's level. And all of a sudden, he's number two. So we'll have to see what happens if he were to win the MVP the night before, which he should, and then if he'll be able to continue to perform and outplay Tom Brady on Sunday. And then for my prediction, I think the Falcons are going to win. I'm going to pick with my heart here. It's going to be a shootout. There's going to be a lot of points scored, but I think the Falcons defense will step up just enough. So I'm going to go with the Falcons. Rise up Atlanta. And we hope to see you after the Super Bowl on a very happy edition of the Atlanta Sports Podcasts.